Hello and welcome. In this video we're gonna actually talk a little bit about uh, router configuration, how to configure router. Uh, we'll actually go over uh, from the host name, okay, command to set up the host name, to secure uh, line passwords, line VTY, line console, to encrypting uh, clear text passwords, and also we are going to talk in the end of this video we're going to talk about ARP address resolution protocol what are the messages okay sent between devices okay to do the ARP and what is the ARP and uh, how actually the ARP is used in local network versus remote network okay in other words when a computer tries to communicate with another computer locally okay how the app works and how actually the uh, app works when a computer tries to communicate with a remote computer okay there are different scenario scenarios that we're gonna actually uh, talk about so first of all let's talk about uh, config router configuration so as you can see the first command that we're going to talk about is the host name notice that I'm in global config mode I can actually issue the host name okay type in question mark you could ask the uh, I'm on a router one this router right here as you can see so uh, we could make the uh, okay the output look, look, look a little bit uh, bigger okay so uh, as you can see we have lots of commands and they are alphabetically ordered and we are looking for command that starts with H for the host name. We could scroll back to top till we find the H and host name. That's just I'm showing you how to figure out the commands that you can use and so on. So as you can see, right here is the host name. Okay, so in global config, okay, global config mode, I'm gonna type host name okay followed by okay r1 for example okay or well, let's actually give it name router one okay so uh, after that we want actually to secure the enable password so you remember when actually we exit like this and then we need to issue the enable password so we need to actually configure Okay, uh, set a password for the enable mode or privilege exec or user exec mode. Okay, so enable there is enable a password and there is also enable secret. So to choose one of them, actually, if you use both of them, the enable secret will be used. So enable secret and then followed by a password, let's say, okay, Cisco123. Notice if I include space, the space will be included in the password. So my password will be Cisco123 and space. So make sure you don't include any spaces. And that's the password for uh, the enable. We set the enable password. Now, if I will go and exit here, okay, I'm gonna hit enter a couple of times. And okay, let's use exit. Okay, so uh, it seems that the enable password, okay, so let's uh, go to global config. We could also set password for line console, if you connect via console, and line VTY. So I can go under line, okay, VTY, those are telnet and SSH uh, passwords, you could actually uh, we have uh, 0 to 15 okay, sessions, which means that 16 users can log in simultaneously using Telnet or SSH, okay, sessions. And then I can type login. So login basically enables users to log in to uh, using Telnet or SSH. If they don't issue the login, nobody can actually log into uh, using SSH or Telnet. Now I can type the password. So the password is Cisco123 without any space. There we go. 
then I'm gonna exit. I can also configure a couple of things like the transport mode. Okay, let's do transport input the incoming packets, incoming sessions via telnet and SSH. Input we could actually use telnet, we could use SSH, or we could use all. Okay, can accept all telnet and SSH. Okay, uh, sessions right there. Then go to line console zero, and then I'm gonna actually enable login. Okay, and then I'm gonna set a password Cisco one two three. Okay, now I'm securing the both the uh, line console. Okay, access via console cable, and also access via telnet and SSH uh, sessions. I also secured the uh, enable password, the user exec okay, mode with a, a password. Now, if we do show, okay, because I'm, I'm in global config mode, let's go to privilege mode and show, as you can see, show run or running config. So as you can see here, if I scroll back down, because this one we use enable secret, so secret password five is used okay this is md5 password is hashed as you can see it's encrypted but if i scroll down to line okay i can see the clear text password so if somebody is behind your shoulder could see what is the password that you are using and to actually fix that problem we use okay password okay password encryption or password service password encryption service then fill out by password encryption okay and do write mem to save the config now if we do do show run because I'm in global config I add do I'm gonna scroll back down okay and as you can see, the password now is encrypted. Okay, we type seven. At least, okay, the password now is encrypted. So if somebody, uh, oh, uh, can uh, actually, if somebody sees the password, it will see the okay, the encrypted password, not the clear text uh, password. Okay, uh, next thing, uh, let's say, um, okay, just want to show you some troubleshooting commands as well. So we could actually use the, uh, the show commands. So we could use, let's go to privilege mode. This is where we issue the show commands. So show IP interface brief to check the IP addresses and interface status. Okay. You can also show run or show startup config. Show start in the startup config. This is basically the startup config. So when you reboot the router, it will actually uh, start from the startup config. It will do the startup config to okay to the RAM random access memory. Okay. If there is no startup config, the router will ask you if you want to go over the wizard. You would say no, and then you need to configure the router for that. As you can see, you can see that we configured DHCP in the last video, and we use exclusion range, as you can see here. So the PCs could get an IP automatically from the uh, router. Okay. So uh, what else we can do? We configured also routing, IP route. This is a static route. And we have two entries. Okay, one entry is actually pointing to the exit interface and the other entry is pointing to next top IP address as you can see on the diagram here, okay? So next top is this interface right here. The IP address configured on this interface. So we're telling the router, router one, if you want to reach this network here, remote network, please go ahead and send it to next top router right here.
So uh, after the router configuration, let's actually uh, talk a little bit about the ARP protocol. I'm gonna make this window look a little bit smaller so we could do we go. So basically the ARP protocol or address resolution protocol is basically IP address to MAC address mapping. Okay, so how the ARP works? So let's say computer one, PC one, when tries to communicate with PC two, okay, it's actually the first thing it does. It's compare its IP address. So here we have. Can I gonna duplicate this one here? Okay, so for PC1 we have an address of, okay, uh, address of, uh, we get actually dot 11 I think, I believe, let's go to PC1 and IP address is dot 1, yeah, dot 1, so IP address is dot 1 slash 25 and for PC2, let's duplicate this one, and I think PC2 gets dot 2, okay, slash 20. Five IP address, right? So the first thing the PCs when they try to communicate locally or remotely, what they do, they basically compare the IP address to the IP address of the destination. Okay. So it will actually sa say that okay, I have ten in the first octet, he has ten. I have two hundred in the second octet, he has two hundred. I have one hundred. He has 100, okay, and since the mask is slash 25, I have 1 and he has 2, and since the mask is slash 25, that's actually, uh, I think I have it in binary written somewhere here, uh, no, it's not, so let's actually do this. So uh, basically, we talked about this IP, okay. So I'm gonna type 10.200.100. Okay. Dot. Let's say one, which is okay. Zero 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 one. Right there. Okay. The other IP address is the 10.200.100.0000. Okay. And then zero. I think um, I might be using more, so it's four eight bits right there, okay, and eight bits here. So this is actually two in binary. So notice that I'm writing just the last octet, and since we are actually using twenty five mask, I'm gonna draw a vertical bar in here, and draw a vertical bar in here. This is slash twenty five basically. So okay. So these two IP addresses must be on the same network. You see? The network portion is exactly the same, is exactly the same on a both IP addresses. And that's how the PCs or devices in general they can pair compare their addresses with the destination address and they know that okay they are on the same network. You see? All the 25 bits are exactly the same here. Okay, 25 bits are exactly the same. So they must be on the same network. At this point, this PC, okay, will actually ARP or send an ARP request requesting the MAC address of PC2. Okay, so here is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do some packet capture in here. Okay, I'm gonna do some packet capture in here. So I'm gonna actually click this link and I'm gonna start the capture. Or let's start the capture between, uh, on this link here, start the capture. There we go. As you can see, the Wireshark pop up. So now, I can't see any ARP. Let's start a ping from this PC right now. Okay, I'm gonna start a ping from PC1 going to PC2. So 
it's 10.200.100.2 and I'm gonna stop the caption right now okay cool nice so uh, what I'm looking for is the ARP as you can see uh, there was some uh, communication using other protocols but I'm interested in the ARP broadcast so as you can see here the ARP is a sent from source okay let's actually uh, check this uh, ARP protocol we can actually go to the frame okay if we expand the frame here so in the frame we are talking about MAC addresses we are talking about data link MAC addresses as you can see so in here uh, we can see that the protocol we are using is ARP we can also see that okay let me check the interface ID okay encapsulation and what I want to actually show you in here I will show you uh, let's go to Ethernet in here so as you can see the destination and source so source is coming from this MAC address as you can see here this is Ethernet frame there's no IP addresses there is just MAC addresses so this is the MAC address of PC1 right and the destination MAC is a broadcast so this is the broadcast MAC so when this PC ARP it sent the ARP request is sent to all okay devices on the network so everybody will get it router will get it and drop it because it's not destined okay it's not actually uh, destined for him so the PC2 will get it and he will actually send back an ARP reply to PC2 okay so uh, as you can see the type we have a source MAC and the destination MAC if we go to the address resolution protocol the ARP as you can see we have the sender IP okay and we have the target IP so it's sent to okay as a broadcast okay but it's sent to 10.200.100.2 to send to the PC not to the router that's what happened in local communication okay in remote communication with this PC tries to communicate with this PC the remote PC right here okay on this remote network things will be different I'm going to show you how this will actually uh, work so I'm going to close the Wireshark or you could actually see uh, let's do cancel and let's check the uh, so this is the broadcast coming from the uh, PC1 and as you can see PC1 is the saying that who has 10.200.100.2 tells okay PC1 right here and he's asking for okay the MAC address of PC2 now PC2 now if we actually check this uh, the uh, this ARP here this is actually ARP reply so if we go to the destination okay the destination is going to PC1 and the source is coming from PC2 okay and this should be an ARP reply to as you can see the sender is PC2 IP address okay and the receiver is PC1 okay and as you can see the PC2 is answering given ARP reply with its own MAC address so the sender MAC address is right here and then the uh, target MAC address is PC2 so he's answering with its MAC address right here and that's how the ARP works so I'm going to close the uh, Wireshark now okay and then let's see what happens when we try to communicate okay on remote with remote PC right here and let's see the difference between uh, how the app works and local versus remote okay network 
Now I'm gonna ping from PC1 okay to basically PC3 right here all the way here which uh, uh, PC3 has the IP address 192.168.100.1 Okay, uh, let me check PC3, IP address is 100.1, okay, 100.1, right there. So the ping is actually, uh, okay, so let's do some request time out. Yeah, we're getting some reply, and let's do some capturing here. There we go. And there we go, CDP. We're getting some loop, SCP, this is Spanning 3 protocol. I think I should capture before, stop the capture before the ping. So let's clear the ARP. Let's clear the ARP and then uh, loop. Let's wait a couple of seconds. Okay, I'm gonna DTP. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna stop the capture, clear the ARP, and then I'm gonna issue the ping back. So I'm gonna stop this guy. He already uh, okay. So let's do. Let's actually clear. We could clear the ARP. Okay, so we can see the show IP ARP to check the ARP which is the address, IP address to MAC address mapping right here, okay? So as you can see, the IP address of PC1 is mapped to its MAC address right here, okay? And the exit interface to reach PC1 is fast Ethernet 00. We have also PC2 and its MAC address right there, okay? We have also uh, this interface on the router. This is actually, as you can see, this is the local, okay? local MAC address on the router itself and as you can see the MAC address of the router 2 it's right here and yeah and we have another MAC address of 1.8.68 to 100 okay and it's mapped right here this is actually the uh, MAC address of the router Two. So uh, we could actually use okay. Let's check clear. Okay, clear IP up. Let's do it probably here. Clear IP up. Incomplete, and we could actually clear everything. Or we could just use question mark in here. So IP address of dynamic ARP entry. So we could clear. Uh, we should do that I think on PC2 so let's clear the um, to show IP ARP and here we go and PC1 has the let's follow up by the IP address right here gonna do clear and exit and then clear IP ARP, ARP. followed by the IP address paste Whoops, we could simply 192.168.100.1 and do show or show IP ARP here, show IP ARP. And sure enough, it's still there, so yeah, it's still learning it. Okay, uh, let's do the ping again, okay? So let's go to PC1. Before we do the ping, let's actually capture some traffic here. Let's close everything. Do that saving. I'm gonna go to uh, to this link here. I'm gonna stop stop the capture. I'm gonna start the capture again. Start capture. Okay. Then what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna actually issue the ping. There we go.
Okay, let's actually look for the ARP. Because actually, when it does the ARP, if the ARP entry exists in the ARP table, is not going to do the ARP again. Okay, so uh, it did it just once, and the ARP actually table uh, is actually there is an aging time of approximately 240 seconds. I'm not quite sure. Okay. Uh, there is an aging time on the ARP okay, table of the uh, devices, so I can't see any ARP request in here. But let me tell you that uh, the ARP basically, the ARP actually, when trying to communicate with remote networks, I'm going to quit this one here. So when PC1 tries to communicate with the remote PC, it does the same, it compares its IP address to, okay, the IP address of destination. This is the source IP, okay, that's one. And this is the uh, destination IP, which is 192.168.100, okay, right to 168 here, 168.100.1 right here, okay, this is that one. Sorry, this is actually zero. And this PC here, PC1, compares the uh, its IP to the IP of this one here. And also there are different masks. So this one is using slash 28, as you can see here. So it will say, okay, I have 10 in the first octet. He has 192. Then PC1 knows that PC3 is located on a different network. At this point, this PC will actually send an ARP request, okay, requesting the MAC address of the default gateway of the router 1, okay, it's default gateway. The default gateway will send an ARP reply back to PC1 with its MAC address. Okay, this one will say, who has okay 10.200.100.126? This is the IP address of default gateway. I need your MAC address, please. This router here will actually respond with okay, you're asking for me. Here is my MAC address. And then the PC, instead of sending data to this PC or somebody else, actually all frames and packets are going to be sent to the default router because he knows that destination is remote is not local so i hope this have been informative for you and i would like to thank you for viewing